Uh, hey folks, welcome to the 20th episode of the Dialogue Project with Akash Narkar, Aditya Bhatia, and Dehra Dedia. Today we have with us someone special, Priyal Kenny, who is pursuing her MBA from London Business School. She is a chartered accountant who has had varied experiences across multiple domains. She is working with the UN Women and among the top 30 individuals to be chosen for the 2030 network. A five-time FedEx speaker, a LinkedIn content creator, she has also have professional shooting experience for around 13 plus years. She has also founded the Play and Shine Foundation and has worked with Delight previously. We are glad to have you, Priyal. Thanks, Thank Akash, Aditya, and Dharia. It was um, an absolute. It's an absolute pleasure to be uh, speaking to you today, and really looking forward to the conversation we're going to have over the next thirty minutes. Thank you, Priyal. It's a delight Thank having you with us. Yeah. Thank you so much, Priyal. Uh, so let's start with our discussion. Um, before applying for an MBA, um, could you please explain to us your profile in terms of three aspects, which are extracurricular activities? Uh, your work experience and any volunteering activities if you might have done? Uh, I think that's a very interesting question because I've had a very uh, unconventional career trajectory and, and very different from what uh, a lot of people in, in, especially from an Indian perspective, choose to pursue. So I started off my career as a professional rifle shooter and I was playing for India for seven years. Uh, did this parallelly when I was pursuing my BCom, MCom and then my chartered accountancy. And then after that, I pivoted to working in consulting, had a two year stint with Deloitte, also worked at a mid-sized PA firm before I decided about pursuing an MBA as the next big thing in my career. Uh, when I was still studying, I also founded my own NGO. This was when I was at the fag end of my chartered accountancy course because I looked at it as an opportunity to merge my interest for sports and social impact. Uh, so that is how the Play and Shine Foundation came into play. And at the same time, I also kept up with my sports. So I think um, the three criteria that you quoted on, on those ends, I think uh, volunteering activity was something that never really happened in the capacity of a volunteer because I started my own NGO. But uh, of course, sports and social impact went hand in hand. So that's where a lot of the social impact work happened and the extracurricular work happened. And I think from a work experience standpoint, uh, post CA worked with a CA firm. Um, also during my article trip, did a lot of work in the in the domains of taxation, accounting, and audit. And I think that gave me a fair understanding of uh, you know in the longer run where I wanted to stick to you know building my technical skills and expertise in these domains or wanted to explore something new. Uh, stumbled upon consulting. Absolutely loved about the idea of you know working on the business side of things. Uh, understanding more beyond the lens of finance and accounting and, and took up a job in it, worked on it for two more years. And I think that kind of widened my horizon about, you know, working with global clients, working with teams across different geographies. And I think that was the first initial nudge that I got about considering a global MBA program because I just felt there is so much of learning if I put myself out of my comfort zone or move to another country for a one or two year program and actually immerse myself in the entire experience. So yeah, that's that's pretty much been my background till date. That's great. That's great. Truly inspiring, actually, the work life balance you maintain doing all of these things. I would like to learn from you. Uh, so now moving on to the uh, academic aspects of things, uh, which tests are accepted at the LBS for an MBA? Uh, which ones did you give and what are your scores on them? Uh, so LBS accepts both GMAT and GRE. Uh, and honestly, there is this huge debatable question that goes about with respect to, you know, whether I should take the GRE, whether I should take the GMAT and which has more weightage. So from a school standpoint, obviously the school is indifferent between GMAT and GRE. It's not that one test is looked down upon in comparison to the other. So I think here it's more of a personal decision of, you know, what test suits you more, for example. Uh, one thing that I went wrong when I started with my business school application journey was I just blindly felt that, you know, GMAT is the test that you're supposed to take. So I didn't even explore GRE as an option. But when I was almost through the entire application journey, I realized that probably GRE would have been more suited to me because in GRE, you uh, one very one important thing that you get in GRE is you can go back to your older questions and you can answer them again. This is something that one of my friends told me, whereas in GMAT, that is one of the biggest pressure components because once you move on from a question or once you select an answer, you, you cannot go back to it. And, and that plays a lot on you, not only from an exam pressure perspective, but even from a timing perspective. So 
uh, I blindly took the GMAT and I scored like a 700 in it. And uh, I started with my business school applications. But if I had to go back, I would have definitely given GRE equal weightage um, and give consider that also as an option or as an exam that I would like to take. Um, secondly, the difference between GMAT and GRE is I've heard GRE is more focused on the verbal aspects of things, whereas GMAT is like equally on the verbal and the quant aspect of things. But of course, um, I can't really vouch for that with like full surety. But for anyone considering to apply for an MBA, like like thoroughly evaluate which um, exam suits you best. I would suggest the mock exams, like free mock exams available online for both GMAT and GRE. So take both these exams and uh, see where you feel you are more comfortable. If you're more comfortable with the testing style for GRE, then start preparing for that. If you're not comfortable with GRE, you can like stick to the GMAT and then start your prep accordingly. So one can start with a diagnostic test for both GRE and GMAT and then correct considering their uh, strengths and weaknesses can go on with one. Understood. So uh, one very frequently asked questions we have is around if the candidate enrolled into any test prep services or any counseling services for their application. So what was your mm -hmm. uh, personal preference or during your journey? Uh, so very honestly, I procrastinated the entire application approach. So uh, I knew somewhere that at some point I do want to apply to business school, but you know whether this year or when 2021 is when I want to start with my applications, I I really delayed that entire process so much so that I missed round one deadlines and then there were only round two deadlines that I could look at. So by the time I started with my application, I was already literally at the 13th hour of getting my test sorted of starting off with my applications and at that point of time as much as I wanted to you know work properly uh, with a counselor a lot of counselors had actually like hung up their boots and they were like you know we we won't be able to help you or support you because you're you're too late with the entire process uh, but still um, there was one of my mentors who I had been associated with since the past two years who helped me on a lot of other uh, aspects with respect to the career, um, with the recruiting process, interviewing and everything. I reached out to her and I told her that she can help me again with the with my applications or be someone who can just, you know, serve as a guiding light just to make sure that, you know, uh, I'm, I'm doing everything correctly. I'm not deviating. I'm not doing anything too horribly wrong because she herself had pursued her MBA from the UK. So I, I worked with her and um, hel she helped me do a lot of proofreading for the essays. Uh, making a list for the scholarships I was eligible for. So yes, a lot of support came from her um, in in those aspects. Uh, as far as it came, as far as test prep was concerned, it was a lot of self study because uh, given my very uh, busy schedule, I didn't have the time to uh, attend for any in person classes because first of all, schedule was very erratic. So I knew I would end up missing a lot of classes. The online classes that I looked up for, they were all like 80 or 100 hour exams. Uh, 80 hour 100 hour classes and I just do not have the time to you know do a 100 hour class and then self study and then jump into mocks and taking the exam so GMAT I, I solely like winged it off doing self study something I, I will not recommend something I just did it because that was a need of the hour because I just wanted to push my applications across and round two and see how I do or you know whether I have to end up reapplying next year so uh, did GMAT on self study even took the TOEFL, but TOEFL I I suggest you can still manage a lot of it on self study. English is something you're very comfortable with, or if you have a uh, command on. And as far as the applications was concerned, uh, worked on them a lot on myself, and then reached out to my mentor for proof feeding. And out of the three schools that I had applied to, reached out to a lot of the folks who are currently studying in those schools or are alums of that school. Um, to actually, you know, just gain their perspectives and insights with respect to how they went around with the application, uh, things I should be highlighting in my application, things that more aligned with what that particular school is looking for in a candidate. So got a lot of authentic advice from there as well. Okay. Got it, got it. So reaching out to alums and even professors in some case might help to uh, draft your essays and SOP. Got it. Okay. So uh, which brings us to our next question. Uh, so what are the uh, stages involved in the application process at LBS? Uh, so it's it's very similar to any other uh, business school. There is an application form online that's available all year. It's up to you to make sure it's filled in like before the three deadlines that they have. So I think the first deadline's already gone. That was 9th of September. 
the second one will be sometime first week of january and i think the third one happens much later in march or april not too sure about that date so once you go online there's an application form um, one thing that a lot of people go wrong with respect to this something that i also went wrong with is when you read the requirements the requirements just say that you know fill an application form you need one letter of recommendation and then your cv and you're good to apply and i knew i had my cv ready i knew my recommender would you know draft the letter when i tell him to draft it so i thought it was just about filling an application form and i'm and i'm good with it but when you open the lbs application form it actually has a good 15 20 mini essays under it and by mini essays i would say uh, they are questions to which you have to write answers which are ranging from 150 to 300 words so in a way they are essays only that you have to write so it's not just the two essays so in addition to the application form there are two more essays that you have to write one is compulsory and it's all about you know why lbs why you why now and i think the second one is optional but i always uh, suggest students to write it because anything you don't write i look at it as a missed opportunity of you know telling something new about yourself so i highly encourage you know write both the essays but in addition to that even the application form uh it's 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 a real struggle because there are so many essays and when you have so many different opportunities by which you can you know put yourself forward you can build your profile or tell your story it can get really challenging because the last thing you want to do is end up writing something irrelevant or anything that doesn't add value to it so uh, one approach that i used is i i made a list of all these mini essays and the big essays and that came down to some 10 or 12 stories that i knew i i needed then i made a list of 15 stories i wanted to tell about myself and they were everything about my motivations my early early life trajectory and how that's connected with respect to you know what i'm passionate about where i see myself a few years down the line or why i'm applying to an lbs right now and once i had these 15 stories ready i started mapping them against the different essays and the questions that were there in the application form and the independent essays of course and then i started curating the content under them so if you are specifically applying to lbs like uh i have the application form alone and the and the essays for the application form alone will like dedicatedly need a good 3 to 4 days if you can dedicate the entire day and if not and you're just working on it over the weekends i would say do it over two or three weekends because just trying to ram it all on one weekend it you'll just hit a mental block after a point where you know you, even you cannot think and there's a lot of self reflection that's involved so you won't be able to think beyond a certain point okay got it got it so the ability to uh, self introspect and story tell is what people look in, into in an sop okay. yeah definitely because uh, one thing that i observe is a lot of people end up stressing on you know number of years of work x and gmat mm-hmm. but um, those are just initial filters i would say if you are about the general gmat score that lbs accepts and the minimum years of work experience that they are looking for after that what it really burns down to or what the deal breaker is you know why you why lbs and why now so if you've got the first few things out of the way like if you google it you'll get the average gmat score or the median range of the gmat score that lbs accepts so if you are in that range you are good like just tick that off and get it out of the way anything higher to higher than that won't be much of an incremental value as much as you know goofing up on these essays can do a harm to you so just just get that initial gmat score out of the way with respect to years of work experience they accept between 2 to 14 years so if you are anywhere at 3 4 years you are you are safe so that is also out of the way and then i would say the only thing that it burns down to is you know your motivations what makes you stand out in comparison to anyone else with a very similar background applying to lbs and then how you beautifully put your story across so you know help build your profile so i would say from a weightage perspective like 30 to 35% weightage goes to your gmat score and your years of work experience and the remaining 60 to 65% or 65 to 70% will actually go with respect to how it all comes together to put your story across okay and post then or uh, the application uh, form do we also have an interview uh yes of course so once you put the application across um there are they, they take a few weeks to come back to you i think it's about a month or maybe 5 to 6 weeks and then you get a call for an interview and the lbs interviews are totally led by alumni so it's not conducted okay. by the admissions office so you basically get details of an alumni with whom you're paired for an interview and then it's up to you and the alumni to you know take this ahead so you get a 3 week window after that um, and within that 3 weeks you and the alumni have to connect have to 
uh, zero down on a time and a date when you want to conduct the interview actually conduct the interview and then you need to give your interviewer about a week to you know write your feedback and send it back to the school so there's like this end deadline by which your interviewer's feedback should come in so a few people even do it towards the end and then the same day the interviewer writes the feedback and send it across a few interviewers are like no we want to finish with the interview early and then we want to properly sit and reflect and write back on the feedback so it really depends like i had my interview in person and i think that was that was a great opportunity because i got to meet someone from lbs in person in mumbai he could take my interview i could answer so many interesting questions uh, i could ask him so many interesting questions about lbs at the end of the interview so it was a great experience whereas a few of my friends just had it online so it it really depends you know how you and your interviewer take it ahead and once that interview is done there's another 3 to 4 week window that the school takes to you know evaluate the interview feedback in the meantime if there are any updates to your application you can submit it for example if you took the gmat again the school is very open to accepting an updated gmat score uh, if there was any if you switch jobs there was any promotion at work or anything else from the entire profile standpoint any update you want to share to the school you can share it with them you have any friends studying who you who will be happy to recommend you to the admissions team this is when all of that happens or anyone you worked with at work who's been an lbs alum who can also write you a recommendation even that is an option so all of this okay. happens once you submitted the application so a big misunderstanding the students have is once you hit the submit button the game's over and then you know then it's all up to your fate but that's that's not true there's like till you don't get your final accept or reject email like at okay. the end of the admissions process there is your application is pretty much on and you're still in the game so there is so much you can still work on hey folks thank you for watching our video please like and share this video and subscribe to our youtube channel also guys please don't forget to mention your views in the comment section below and see you soon with our next video